Hi everybody, it's February 15, 2018. Well, I just tried to do this video. I'm experiencing a lot of computer problems um, and as well as speech problems. So I'm going to try to go through this quickly. Uh, the problems that I've been experiencing cognitively and all of you who are sensitive to these frequencies this report right here confirms everything that we have been saying. We are under attack. The sonic weapons, the, the ultra-low frequencies, the videos that I've been posting catching the ultra-low frequencies, the use of them on Intellicast, the satellite, those are sonic weapons. Ultra-low frequencies Sonic weapons can be in the infrasonic, ultrasonic, or within an audible range. And it just depends on what spectrum of frequency they are choosing to use. So you can hear it, but they can also use it against an individual or an entire region use these frequencies where people can't hear it. Though many people do hear it, the tinnitus, the buzzing, or however you experience the tinnitus, because everybody describes it differently. This right here, published today in the American Medical Association's journal, Neurological Manifestations Among U.S. Government Personnel, Reporting Directional, Audible, and Sensory Phenomena in Havana, Cuba. Well, the uh, those who were chosen to evaluate the personnel, all of their symptoms, this is their report out today. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I think on Kafka Winston World, I posted the Cuba sonic weapons attack against our uh, embassy personnel in Cuba. I can't find them on Never Lose Truth. This is the only thing that I have, sonic weapons attack now in Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan. I did some research. I just wanted to see what mainstream media, if they had updated any of their um, articles on the Cuban weapons attack. Here, stressful conditions, not sonic weapon, sickened U.S. diplomats. Cuba panel asserts. Oh, okay, so they're saying that a panel of experts in Cuba have decided that it's stressful conditions. The United States, the, the uh, State Department, they just work their embassy personnel into sickness. Really? Um, and here we have FBI rules out Cuba sonic weapons, but U.S. fears embassy staff may have been infected with a virus. Okay. Trump administration may have been infected with a virus. Great. Well, we all know that sonic weapons were used and they're being used against us. And unfortunately, many of us are experiencing the symptoms that the embassy personnel, the embassy workers down in Cuba experienced. So I'm going to go over these symptoms that people, that they have noted. Um, I'll link below to everything. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I am going to be reading quite a bit because it's important for everybody to hear. This confirms the U.S. <laughs> military and government documents confirm what we have been experiencing. But there are particular things in this report. One in which I experienced but could never find anything that could confirm what I was saying and when I get to it I'll let you know but it was a wow for me to read it there are a couple of wows but and I'm not going to go through the percentages um, in terms of there were 21 individuals that they were evaluating these US Embassy uh, workers down in Cuba 21 individuals so for 18 uh, they reported hearing a novel localized sound at the onset of symptoms in their homes and hotel rooms. Uh, 
Affected individuals describe the sounds as directional, intensely loud, uh, with a pure and sustained tonality. Of the patients, high-pitched sounds were reported by 16, although two noted a low-pitched sound. What, what I, why I'm reading that in particular, just to show you that every individual, you know, we have our unique physicality uh, constitution, so that's why there, there's a whole range of symptoms out there, and there are a lot of individual differences in terms of the manifestation of these symptoms. You know, some hear buzzing, some hear grinding metal, some hear per piercing squeals or humming. So the tinnitus that we all describe, we describe it differently. But isn't it interesting that these embassy workers, they, this is how they describe the sound, buzzing or grinding metal or piercing squeals, humming. And I have said, that the buzzing that I have heard 24-7, persistent, it's permanent, has been permanent for years, and right now the buzzing is high-pitched. They have changed a frequency, I believe, and that's why many of us are hearing the buzzing or humming or however we describe it as much louder. Now, I noted last year that it still seemed to be the same volume during the day, but at night, my God, did it become loud. Now it's loud 24-7, so loud that it's very rare now that I can be engaged in something, and what I am engaged in trumps the attention of this humming, so I don't, I'm not attending to it, it's still there, but I've lost, you know, the the hearing of it just because my attention is so engaged. But most often I can't do that anymore. And I've also said the buzzing now is high pitched. I've described a difference in one of the videos I posted, which is like a nail, you know, on a blackboard. And sometimes it's so loud that I could I could describe it as a piercing squeal. The sounds for some were associated with pressure like pressure in your head, pressure in your ears, and some did not hear a sound. The sensory stimuli were likened to air baffling inside a moving car with the windows partially rolled down. Sound and sensory stimuli were often described as directional in that the individuals perceived a distinct direction from which the sensation emanated. And yes, these devices that they have, they can. They are directional. Um, for some changing location, the sensation disappeared, their symptoms began to reduce. Five individuals reported covering their head or ears, though it did not do anything for them. Um, some experienced a two 10 second pulse reported as a single exposure episode. Other patients reported hearing a sound that was continuous for longer than 30 minutes. 20 reported immediate onset of neurological symptoms associated with this directional phenomena. One individual awoke from sleep with acute symptoms, headache, unilateral, unilateral ear pain and ear changing. So those who have left comments that you've been hearing uh, the buzzing that sometimes is accompanied with a very sharp, painful, high-pitched tone. It's almost like a jab with a needle, needle right into your ear, but it's one ear or the other. It's never both unilateral ear pain and hearing changes. Days to weeks after exposure, individuals reported that they experienced the onset of additional cognitive neurobehavioral mood and physical symptoms. 
So, persistent cognitive manifestations were reported by 17 individuals. That's a huge 81% of the individuals have been experiencing persistent cognitive manifestations. Okay, this is what I want to say. Now, when you get hit with these frequencies, you're getting hit with a dose of frequency so high that it can create cognitive or neurological symptoms that will be persistent because the hit was so intense. However, if you took away the frequency, my hunch is that many people could recover. But we are living now saturated in dangerous frequencies. So when this report, when people are talking about the exposure has been taken away, well, the exposure of an intense hit was taken away, but they're still exposed to dangerous frequencies. And those frequencies and the ultra low frequencies that I've been showing you in videos on satellites, this may be the reason why they and we can't recover completely. So they've been experiencing memory problems, memory problems, feeling mentally foggy, impaired concentration, feeling cognitively slowed, neurobehavioral difficulties, irritability, nervousness, feeling more emotional, sadness, Six individuals, a clear change in work performance was noted by supervisors and colleagues, and they've experienced what, what has been termed good day, bad day pattern. When they have exerted themselves either cognitively or physically, that then is followed by an exacerbation of their symptoms for several days. Cognitive symptoms, disinquilibrium, uh, headaches, cardiovascular exercise exacerbates that. Okay, when I had my stroke from these medications put on the market as safe, and it still happens today, but it's not a persistent problem, but I couldn't run. I was a runner. The stroke left me so impaired that when I would physically exert myself, I became so dizzy that I couldn't. I literally could not physically exert myself. This is the first report that has confirmed for me that, um, no, it's real. And many of these symptoms are also associated with stroke, mild stroke. Um, so thank you, <laughs> because I get the sense that when I speak my experience, people just don't believe it. They want to believe that I'm lazy. They want to believe, you know, that I'm lying. We have so many dangerous toxins that we are now experiencing. And so many are experiencing very serious medical conditions. But when you try to tell people, even people in the know about all of the poisons and they know about the symptoms of these frequencies, because they're not experiencing it, well, it's not real. It's truly fascinating, this world that we are living in. But yes, the exertion, physical or cognitive, can leave you not so great for days after. But that they experienced from cardiovascular exercise, disequilibrium. Hmm. Okay, six individual in okay. Six individuals all had significant areas of cognitive weakness and or impairment. Impairments were found in executive function, motor function, auditory and visual memory, visual, spatial, perception, visual, motor, construction, auditory attention, and working memory, language, processing speed, and reasoning.
all individuals demonstrated a high level of effort during testing and had intact cognitive domains including visual working memory and academic achievement. Um, individuals noted apathy, executive dysfunction, disinhibition. Experts have likened these microwave electromagnetic frequencies to psychiatric medications. The adverse effects that you have from psychiatric medications or the effects that they want you to have, they can achieve that with microwave frequencies. And disinhibition, apathy, all of this is related. It is, is exact to what happens when people go on psychiatric medications. The same symptoms. Uh, severe level of anger, severe levels of depression and anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, acute nausea and dizziness were experienced during exposure. More than three months after exposure, individuals reported a higher prevalence of dizziness, general balance problems. These symptoms were exacerbated by walking quickly, tasks involving head movements, complex visual environments, or while simply standing still. Balance symptoms were also worsened with eyes closed or in low light conditions. And many reported visual problems, difficulty reading, light sensitivity, eye strain, which was experienced particularly with reading and was associated with headaches, disequilibrium and nausea. So much of this is what I experienced, so much of what I've read and what in subscribers that I've spoken to. This is what so many of us are experiencing because we are, we are being attacked with the same weapons. Many reported hearing a loud sound associated with ear pain, tinnitus. Days to weeks following exposure, individuals continued to report tinnitus with a change in their hearing. More than three months after exposure, sound sensitivity was the most common auditory concern, followed by tinnitus and ear pressure. Persistent hearing reduction, pure tone sounds, uh, moderate to severe hearing loss, some had to be fitted with hearing aids. Sleep disrupted. Difficulty falling asleep. Reduced sleep duration. Significant daytime fatigue. And most individuals required pharmacological intervention to improve their sleep. Unfortunately, when we have to then rely on sleep aids, the more we use them, the less likely we will ever be able to recover our organic, natural brain function. But they have pretty much depleted melatonin with the use of the frequencies. So um, the sleep deprivation, that in itself is taking a mighty toll on an awful lot of people. Um, some experienced an, an immediate onset of headache, intense head pressure, days to weeks following. 17, a huge number, developed headaches. 16% or 76%, 16 individuals experienced persistent headaches longer than three months after exposure. Headaches were reported to be exacerbated or associated with cognitive tasks, rehabilitative therapies, um, and the individuals were able to differentiate the character of these headaches with their standard headaches. How many of you can differentiate what you're experiencing? I have so many strange headaches now, headaches that I've never ever experienced before. Um, consistent cluster of neurological signs and symptoms were noted. Widespread brain network dysfunction, 
mild traumatic brain injury or concussion. Concussion was considered uh, cognitive symptoms including difficulty remembering, feeling cognitively slowed. Um, well, let me jump to the concussion part. Concussion. They've ruled it out because there were notable differences between the concussive symptoms and what these people were reporting. The individuals experienced unilateral ear pain, tinnitus after exposure, uh, unilateral peripheral uh, vision uh, disturbances, central ves vestibular dysfunction, which is a finding uh, that all of these things are not related to concussion. And let's see. Um, cognitive difficulties interfered with these patients' ability to multitask, process information quickly with accurate recall, solve problems, and perform rapid decision making. Cognitive impairments are often the slowest to improve following acquired brain injury. Not uncommon for people with cognitive impairment to have mood disturbances such as depression, anxiety, and or post-traumatic stress disorder. So they are inflicting us with brain injury. Um, listen to this limitation. Study has several limitations. First, due to the sensitive nature of this publication, certain details typically reported in a case series of exposure were omitted. Omitted, including specifics about geography, relationships between individuals and individual demographics. And so, if they are concealing what they consider to be security uh, uh, information that they have to conceal due to security concerns, how the hell can they say that it's a virus or stressful conditions? All right. I'm going to link below to this and you know I feel like on every video now I've got to apologize for the length of them um, but I'm experiencing an awful lot of cognitive difficulties. I know that a lot of you are and however embarrassing it is I don't care. I'm not going to stop until the fat lady sings but these are very serious conditions now that we're all finding ourselves in. We are under attack. We are at war. They are using ultra-low frequencies against us. And unfortunately, no, most Americans will not wake up to this, will not do the research to find out. So we're left in a war so surreal. <laughs> because of how unconventional it is that this war is going to end up taking more and more of us more and more of, more and more of us out and i think it's very very important to talk about the symptoms and to talk about the seriousness of what is going on and very important for everyone to not at all downplay how dangerous these weapons are. Alright guys, all links are below. I hope you're all doing okay.